Hi, Bill Jones from Turntastic Wood Designs. I've got a Harbor Freight lathe. It's, uh, it's one that uh, a lot of people are real familiar with. And these uh, lathes are known for, uh, notorious for a couple of specific problems. The first one being that the headstock tends to wobble a little, especially when you take a piece off. And my father-in-law solved that problem by adding a couple of uh, metal pieces of metal here to uh, extend the, uh, the little doohickey that holds the headstock down. And that, that holds it nice and firm and that works. The second uh, problem they're, they're known for is an undersized motor. I think the motor that comes with it is, is uh, roughly one third horse and it just isn't enough to do the job for, for what most people are doing. So uh, I used it and about the third time I used it, I burned this motor up, burnt it up completely. So uh, maybe somebody knows how, out there knows how to fix a burnt up motor, but I don't. Uh, and even if I did, I'd still have a third horse motor that, that's really undersized. So I saw what I'm going to do next. I saw uh, another fellow do on, uh, on YouTube. And I'm going to take a motor out of a treadmill and uh, make a variable speed motor and uh, see if I can't uh, make that a little better. So I'll get started on that next. I got this treadmill for no cost. A lot of times you can find treadmills on Craigslist for a very low cost or even free sometimes. I started tearing the treadmill apart and found that the motor was indeed just what I was looking for. And breaking down the rest of the treadmill is probably the most exercise I've ever gotten out of a treadmill. Once I yanked the motor out of the treadmill, I needed a way to control it. Uh, actually, the first thing I did was take off the big, uh, the big counterweight on the front and that just unscrews. So I needed a way to control it. It is possible to control it using the controls that come with, a, with the uh, treadmill, but that's a little bit beyond my skill and ability. There's some, some rewiring you have to do there and I'm not that great with the electronics. So I got this uh, DC speed controller that's much easier to use and I'll show you how I wired that up. Now, I want to be perfectly clear here uh, at the start. I am not a trained electrician. I will likely use uh, some wrong terminology here. If you see me do something here and you're considering trying it and you don't know what you're doing, you can get harmed or even killed by electricity. Electricity is inherently dangerous. So if you're not sure of what you're doing, seek the help of a qualified electrician. Don't do this unless you're absolutely confident in what you're doing. Now that being said, I'll show you this controller. This is a KM, I'm sorry, KBMD controller that I bought online. It's got an on-off switch, uh, on-off light, and a rheostat. If you get this, you uh, need to consider a couple of things. There are uh, three components that are additional that you ne absolutely need to buy that it's not clear when you order this that you need those, but you do need them. And then there's one thing that I did that is a, uh, an optional component, and that's the forward and reverse switch. Well, I'll show you how I wired it up. And it's not as complicated as it looks. All right, coming out of, uh, for power, it's, it's really simple. This is, is the power cord here, and it comes in here, and there is a white wire, a, that goes to line two, a black wire that goes to line one, and you've got a ground wire. And that's it for power. It's, it's that simple. Coming off the motor, coming off the motor, you've got a red and a black, all right? And if you're gonna use the reverse switch the way I did, all right, now this looks complicated, but it's really not that bad, all right? So coming off the motor, are, uh, there are six sets of poles, or three sets of poles, all right? See, you, you, the middle pole goes to the motor. You put a red and a black on the middle poles. And then you have a red and a black that are, are gonna go to the amateur one and amateur two. Armature, sorry, armature one and armature two, not amateur. Uh, and then you simply crisscross, you make little jumpers that make an X. You crisscross those and then go to armature one, armature two, and that's all there is to it. So I'll hook up those two, turn it, uh, uh, get it set up, and I'll show you here in just a moment. I mentioned uh, three additional components 
that you absolutely need, and then I forgot to show them to you. Um, you need a horsepower resistor, which is basically a fuse. You need a 15 or 20 amp fuse, depending on what you're plugging it into. And you'll need a, um, a heat sink to draw heat away from the control. So here it is all wired up. I've got the cover back on. Uh, and I'll go ahead and plug it in, show you how it works. All right, uh, you, you plug it in. The controller has an on-off switch. When it's on, you get a little indicator light. And then I've got this forward reverse switch. I showed you how I wired it up earlier. We'll start with forward. And then you simply turn up the, uh, the rheostat. And you can control the speed. Go real slow. All the way up to real fast. Take it back down to zero. Let it, let it stop. Put it in reverse. And you can go the other direction. So that's real handy. So I've got a nice motor now that can uh, be reversed and will handle the speed. Uh, well, handle the load, I mean. And uh, now the big challenge is to figure out how to mount it on the lathe and, uh, and get it hooked up right. First, I ripped everything that I was no longer going to need out of the old lathe head to mount the motor onto the lathe. I took the piece of steel that came from the old uh, treadmill. It already had a motor mount on it with a slide here to adjust the tension. Now this looks really uh, unprofessional and really ugly, but then so do I. Uh, it's going to work. It's, it does look reeky dink, and it is, but uh, it's definitely going to work for my purposes. Then I took some half-inch plywood and knocked up uh, this contraption that fits really tightly over the headstock. It serves a couple of purposes. It works as a as a bit of a guard and I'll mount the controller right here. Well here it is, finally all put together. I've got the uh, treadmill motor on it, the DC controller. One thing I didn't mention, I did go ahead and pick up a little cheap uh, tachometer. That's real simple to do there, about, about, I think it was about $12. Uh, it's just got a little uh, sensor in there and it, you put a magnet on the spindle and it, it can figure that out. So uh, here we go. We'll turn it on, send forward. I can get down to 80-ish. And all the way up to just over 3,000. And of course it works in reverse, which is really nice for sanding. So there we go. Uh, took what was not uh, what was a broken lathe and uh, and a not used treadmill and, and made something uh, something fun out of that uh, and something very very useful. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Well, I hope you liked this video and found it useful. If you did, please like and share with your friends. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me out. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, thanks for watching.